Hello, I'm Blake Everhart, Solutions Training Manager with ViewSonic. And I'm Dan Sharp, one of ViewSonic's professional development trainers. Today we want to talk to you about best practices for connecting a device in a hybrid learning scenario. A lot of times this is important because if you're trying to teach and manage your virtual students from one screen, this is very challenging. So having a second monitor or a second display like the one behind me is super helpful. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how do you make sure you're connected correctly to your monitor or to your display? Now, this monitor here uses what's called a USB-C cable to connect to its device. It's a small cable and you can see here, Blake's holding it. He's gonna plug that into his laptop and then that's going to start transmitting audio and video from the laptop to his screen. So essentially, he took one device and turned it into two devices. Same thing here with my Chromebook. I can connect it to the display that's behind me. This display behind me uses a different kind of video cable. It's called an HDMI cable. Uh, you're probably more familiar with this cable. This is what connects to TVs and DVD players and things like that. So this cable is currently plugged in to my panel and I'm just gonna connect it here to my Chromebook and make sure I switch my inputs to the correct input. And you'll see here, now my Chromebook is also being displayed behind me. If your display is touch and you want touch input, you're also gonna need to connect another cable. It's a USB A to B cable. So this USB cable plugs into my laptop and then the other end is gonna plug into the display. Again, this is gonna give me touch the HDMI cable by itself will just show video. Now that we have all this connected, what we wanna do is get that two extended desktop dual screen display set up. Because even though we have two displays now, you'll notice that it's mirrored. So what I see on my teacher laptop is actually the same thing that I see on my monitor. That's still not helpful because essentially I'm teaching from one screen. So Blake's gonna walk us through how to enable extended desktop mode on a Windows laptop. So understand there's two ways of being able to do this. The first way is going through settings. However, a shortcut is to hold the Windows key and press P. That'll then bring up the settings for your display. As you notice, it is in duplicate mode. What we wanna do is move it to extend mode. When we extend our screen, you can now see that we have two different displays that we have control over. So maybe I need to drag specific programs that I can see larger onto my secondary screen, or I can drag it back to my desktop. This thing allows you to have more flexibility in your hybrid learning environment. Same thing with the Chromebook. I can use a shortcut on my Chromebook to get off mirrored mode into extended mode. It's a little bit different than Windows, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hold down the control button on our keyboard, it's in the bottom left corner, and then we're gonna press the full screen button. Normally on a Chromebook, this is right above uh, the number four key. And when I press this, you'll see that I have one screen down here on my Chromebook, and then the display behind me is my second desktop. Again, it's like using two devices. And to Blake's point, I can click and drag one screen and move it over to the other screen if I want to in order to utilize that extended desktop. So if I drag this window over, you'll see that I can get it to display and show up on my primary here. Now that you have everything connected, let's talk about how we launch and present our lesson using our video conferencing software. Maybe you use Zoom, Meet, or Teams. It doesn't really matter what software you use. The idea, again, with extended desktop mode is that our teacher device or our laptop is our primary display. This is what we like to start the meeting from. And then our extended desktop, whether it's a monitor or a display, this is what we're gonna be teaching from. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna open Zoom. So again, my main laptop, my main device, this is what I'm gonna start the meeting from. So I'm just gonna create a new meeting here. So 
So now that I have the meeting started, again here on my teacher device or my main display, the second step is to get my teaching content on my second display or my extended desktop. If you remember from a second ago, Blake was able to show one program on this screen simply by dragging it from this display over to my extended desktop. So even though there's a space here, like a physical space, these computers are connected virtually. So I can drag uh, from this screen over to this screen. So I'm gonna start with my whiteboarding tool. I'm just gonna drag it over to my second display. So again, here you can see Zoom in the background. Zoom's ready to go. My students can join and my teaching space is all here on my extended desktop. So in order for my students though to see what's happening here, my virtual students on my extended desktop, I have to share my screen. So again, whether you're using Teams or Meet or Zoom, you should be familiar with how to share your screen. There's either a present button or a share screen button. Now, when you are running extended desktops, no matter what program you're using, Meet Zoom Teams, you're gonna get a notification window that's gonna ask you what screen do you wanna share? Do you wanna share a specific application or do you wanna share um, screen one or screen two? So the way that this works, how most computers operate, is that the main device is your screen one, always and your extended desktop is your screen two. So again, one is your primary display where your laptop is connected, and then your second monitor or your large format display is screen two. Now, if you're using Zoom, it makes it a little simpler. They actually display numbers on each screen to show you that this is screen one and this is screen two. So when I'm ready to start teaching, I choose the screen that I wanna share, which is again, screen two because that's where my teaching content is. I click the share button, and now this part is being shared with the students who are virtual. This allows me to use this desktop space as a free space. Students can't see what's happening on screen one. So this is where I can monitor or manage my class. So remember, the whole point of this setup is that I'm really creating two devices, even though I have one laptop or one device. The monitor or the display creates a second device, allowing me to teach from here and monitor from my teacher laptop. Remember, kids can't see what's on here on this screen. And so what I can do, for example, is I can bring up the participant list or the chat, and I can have all these other windows down here on my teacher device allowing me to monitor the students who are virtual. Meanwhile, this screen, my monitor or my large display is completely freed up, allowing me to have uninterrupted instruction while simultaneously monitoring and supporting my students who can't virtually be in class.